A whole braised lamb shank is one of the most impressive main courses that I know how to make. And I know if it's date night, it's my girlfriend's favorite thing to eat. One of my favorite things to do is to marinate them in a little red wine, cook them nice and slow, and then glaze them in their juices. First thing I start out with is a little bouquet of herbs. So I take a little orange zest, and with all the herbs, I really like to mash them around with my hand to start releasing their aroma, because they're gonna sit in a plastic bag or a container with the lamb shanks, and they're gonna marinate overnight. With the garlic, give it a good whack. And then I put them in some cheesecloth, and I wrap them right up. So that's the first step. Herb bouquet. Goes in a bag. The next step is take our shanks out. Back shanks are gonna be the most impressive looking when they're finished and on the plate. And I like to have both of the shanks, the bottom portions at the bottom, just so that they marinate evenly. And then for the marinade, we got the herbs in there that are gonna flavor it. Then red wine, red wine and lamb is always a good combination. I'm also gonna make sure to press down my bouquet of herbs so that it's underneath the liquid to make sure that it infuses. A little bit of balsamic vinegar. That's gonna add some nice tartness, a teensy bit of sweetness, and it helps it get nice and syrupy. A little bit of homemade chicken stock, a good pinch of salt and pepper, about a quarter teaspoon. just to get a little seasoning in there. Then the secret ingredient, cocoa powder. The cocoa powder is gonna help make the sauce really nice and velvety. And it's going to help the sauce absorb a little bit of butter when we're finishing it. But naturally, it's not dessert. So unsweetened cocoa powder. Don't be using hot cocoa mix. So I'll mush it around a little bit and then I'll put that in a bowl to make sure that it doesn't get all over in my fridge. And then I'll let this sit for 24 hours or maybe even six hours if you press for time. But let it sit for a couple hours because it'll taste a lot better. So the shanks have come out of the oven, and now it's time for the exciting part. Slowly cooking down the liquid and basting and glazing the shanks. I'll baste the lamb shanks here and there while the liquid is still pretty liquidy. So when the liquid is about half reduced from the lamb, that is when I'm gonna add the butter. I'm also gonna double check my seasoning. Make sure it's tasting good. And it is tasting really good, but I'll hit it with a little pinch of salt. Not too much. Now I wanna make sure that that butter emulsifies. So I'll tilt the pan a little bit. And then it's just having patience is the key with this. Baste, baste, and baste some more. Okay, I would call those just about good. So when the liquid is really nice and reduced and your lamb shanks are looking amazing, I like to turn the heat off and then I'll heat up some mashed potatoes or some vegetables to go along with it and the lamb shanks will sit in the pan and they're still gonna cook, the sauce is still gonna reduce and this is kind of the critical period where you can really apply the sauce as like a lacquer. But I like to do it with the heat off because we don't want to burn the sauce. When the lamb shanks are done, gently, very gently, take them out of the pan. 
it can be a little bit awkward. Put it on the plate. When you have a dish that has mashed potatoes or some sort of starch like that, there's a tendency to want to put the mashed potatoes underneath the braised meat. That is not what you should do. It ends up being kind of a messy plate for me. So what I like to do, I'm gonna take some of my potatoes, I'm gonna put them right on the side. A little bit of Romanesco, some cauliflower, a little broccoli, something green to kind of liven up the plate. Use whatever you want. There's our red wine lacquered lamb shanks. 